So I wanted a way of doing this, but globally for space-time. And the thing is that the positive-negative frequency idea was something that I learned from Engelbert Schucking, who was uh, somebody I shared an office with when I was in a group of people working on general relativity in Syracuse, New York State, in the United States. And there were a lot of people working on relativity theory there. And this was, I think, in 1962. And I learned from Engelbert to th Schucking two things which I found very interesting. One of them was this question of what you mean by what's important in quantum field theory. And he said the most important thing in quantum field theory is the splitting of field amplitudes into their positive and negative frequency parts. You t keep the positive frequency and you throw away the negative frequency. And I thought, gosh, that's an interesting idea. The other thing he told me was, and he told me various things, but these were the things of relevance to what I'm saying. The other thing he said was to do was the Maxwell field equations. Maxwell's equations, which are very important, they describe electricity, magnetism, and light. So it's a theory of light, as well as the how electric and magnetic fields interrelate to each other. Very beautiful equations, which I learned about when I was a graduate student. And uh, I was very keen on the Maxwell equations, especially when you write them in this formalism called two-spinner formalism which is, I can say a bit more about later, but the Maxwell equations, he told me they are conformally invariant. So they only depend on space-time structure independent of the scaling. So if you magnify the scale up or down, magnify the metric up or down, if you like, it makes no difference. That's conformally equivalent. So the conformal maps are ones, or the conformal transformations are ones which can change the scale, but they don't change the, well, they don't change the light cones in special relativity terms. So the speed of light is the same. Light, after all, the speed of light is the same when you magnify and the, change the scale. But the ma the, what, what struck me about this, these two facts that I learned from here, is there seemed to be a little of a, an impasse between the two. I mean, how do you decide what splitting the positive and negative frequency? You look at the individual frequencies, which means you do a Fourier decomposition, and you take each individual Fourier component and you split that into its positive and negative parts. That's not conformally invariant. You do a conformal map, for rescaling, the Fourier de decomposition does not go into itself.